Hi, my name is Dan Coates. I'm a solution evangelist at ACI Worldwide. And this is What is Point-to-Point -point Encryption? Let's get started. First of all, why do we need point-to-point -point encryption? Most importantly, we need to protect the consumer. When card data is stolen, it is a devastating event for a card holder. They are losing time. They are losing money, perhaps temporarily, perhaps permanently. Uh, then they start investigating and trying to understand where that uh, information was stolen. Uh, that may lead back to a brand, and they will put less trust in that brand and shy away from using that brand in the future. It also may cause a media event and other negative events for that brand. And finally, other technologies don't fully secure it. So when we talk about, say, uh, tokenization or uh, EMV, they are not uh, doing the same work that point-to-point -point encryption is. They're not necessarily hiding the data or encrypting the data appropriately. Let's look into what is point-to-point -point encryption. Well, first of all, it is hardware encryption. This is encryption that occurs directly on the uh, card accepting device, wherever you dip, tap, or swipe. It's not happening in software further down the line. It is inside what is called a TRSM, a tamper-resistant security module. What makes it tamper-resistant? Well, if you try to access the hardware in there, if you try to to read those pins on the chip, if you try to do anything, it will render the device useless. It will turn it into a brick. Uh, next, uh, the data is not decrypted until it arrives in a safe harbor. There's typically a zero knowledge principle uh, going on at a merchant. So the device is loaded with a key and it's typically one key per device. And even if that uh, key is accessed or found by somebody. First of all, remember, it's inside that TRSM, so that device is a brick. And second of all, the merchant typically doesn't have the key to do the decryption, so it doesn't do anybody any good anyway. Typically involves some kind of a key rotation, especially when we're talking about duck putt, derived unique key per transaction. That key is rotated every single transaction. So even if somebody does brute force or decrypt that key uh, just by going through every known possible key combination, it doesn't do any good because the next transaction will have different data in it. The technology is typically based on RSA, and we're moving in the industry towards AES, the Advanced Encryption Standard. Uh, today, we're using the Data Encryption Standard or the Triple Data Encryption Standard, so it gets encrypted three times over. Uh, but we're moving towards AES in the industry, and that will take uh, a few years. Let's quickly compare point-to-point -point encryption to other uh, encryptions that you've probably heard of. Well, first of all, TLS. This is transport layer security. This is typically uh, at the network layer. So this is this only applies to networks. Um, so there's a, a good chunk of pathways within a device, within a, a computer, where we're not using TLS. It's it's uh, you typically added uh, when you go onto a network and then stripped off immediately when you come off of a network. So this is not protecting us fully, although it does give us what we call an envelope uh, to pass data through. Secondly, we could look at software-based encryptions. So there's some uh, platforms where we'll typically use a, a general use computer to do the encryption. But again, this is susceptible to attack. So for example, you can do memory scraping um, to, uh, to access this. And then finally, let's talk about pin encryption. This is not the same as point-to-point -point encryption, but the technology in many cases is actually the same. Same thing here. It's encrypted inside the tamper-resistant security module, but it only applies to the pin. It generates a pin block. And for the purposes of encryption of P2PE, you can think of having a PAN block there. Uh, typically, the key is owned by an acquiring system or processor, but it can also be owned by uh, a separate platform uh, for decryption or translation. Next, let's walk through typically how point-to-point -point encryption actually works. And I'm going to do this in what in a duck putt example. So again, DUKPT, derived unique key per transaction. So let's learn how this works quickly. First of all, an HSM, a hardware security module, a device that's typically in a data center that's dedicated to just encryption and decryption, and it's really, really a hardened device and generates a super secret key. Now, super secret key is not a term that's, that's very uh, professional, so they had to give it a more professional name. They call it a BDK, a base derivation key. But really, you can think of it as the super secret key. And that is shared, but only with the key injection facility and if you get into this, the security folks will say, hey, we, we do what's called a key ceremony. They have very, very specific rules and uh, they split up knowledge of the key. So not everybody has it. It's not all entered at the same time. There's very specific rules and procedures to ensure that that key remains safe and nobody has full knowledge of a key at any given time. And then for each device, that key injection facility injects 
a slightly different derived key. So it's not the exact same key as that super secret key. We kind of change it a little bit for every single device. It's typically tied to the device ID or to a serial number associated with that. So every single key gets, or sorry, every single device gets a different key. Next, that individual key is used to generate session keys. So you start with session one, session two, session three, session four, as we go through each transaction. But it's only used once and discarded. How many keys can we go through? Typically, a device will have about a million keys in it. And if you run some calculations saying, oh, I'm going to do a transaction, you know, on, the, on average, uh, say, uh, every five minutes, and um, I'm open for 12 hours a day, and you'll run some calculations and you'll discover that that device is good for years and years and years, you know, 10 years, 15 years, depending on, on what model you use um, to, to run your calculations. But the truth is, is that that actual hardware and the use of that device will wear out well before you exhaust the number of keys uh, within that device. And so each transaction contains this encrypted block, and it also contains what we call a KSN, a key serial number. And so what does that contain? It contains a key set ID. In other words, it's just a fancy name. It just tells us which BDK to use. So if, if I've got a system and I've got a bunch of BDKs because I'm decrypting for a whole bunch of different merchants, I need to know which one to use. And then there's the device ID, and that has uh, that's related to that IDEC that we talked about, that individual serial number. So if I know that and I know how we calculate that individual key, and then finally we have that encryption counter. And so we combine that all together. We know exactly what key they used for encryption. And so now I can decrypt it on my safe harbor and process it along and send it to a different system or maybe re-encrypt it into a different standard to transmit it to uh, the upstream system. But in this case, it's very, very secure. And like I said, if anybody ever did try, to um, decrypt a single key. It doesn't do them any good in terms of getting any of the other data uh, because it's, uh, it's a completely different key used every single time. So that's a high level explanation of how point-to-point -point encryption works, or at least just for duck I uh, hope this has been useful. Uh, there's other topics to explore here. So, you know, there's lots of things like, you know, what's the difference between E2EE versus point-to-point -point encryption, end-to-end -end encryption, right? What's the difference between, um, to, uh, P2P and tokenization, and hey, about tokenization, vault versus vaultless, and what about this validated point-to-point -point encryption? Well, you know, we're going to talk about those, and I invite you to uh, like and follow and watch me, and we'll get some more videos out and explain all these things as we go along. Thanks, and have a great day.